Last weekend, Mrs. Disgruntled and I went to the cinema to watch the new Marvel movie, Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, I'm a big fan of the MCU, but I didn't rush out to see this as soon as it came out because ever since Sony bought the rights to Spider-Man, they've proved that time and time again, it's possible to continuously fuck the same thing up. Even the last movie, Homecoming, that was made with Marvel was just, oh, whatever. But the new film um, is really good. It's a by-the-numbers Marvel movie, meaning it has to do two things. First of all, it has to make a shitload of money for Disney. And secondly, it has to keep us, the viewers, entertained for a couple of hours so we forget how terrible the world actually is. Actually, Endgame didn't do that, did it? That was um, not a happy ending. If you ever went past the cinema when that film was on, you will watch armies of geeks walking out with mild PTSD. And I can say that because I was one of them. But the new film is really good fun. However, it does have the same problem that all Marvel movies have. That being, if you get the plot and subject it to any logic or reason, it very quickly falls apart. Now, there are no major spoilers I'm going to reveal here, but this film begins with a Avengers-level threat to the world. The world could end, so Nick Fury's trying to get in contact with Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Now, it's made very clear that Captain Marvel and Thor are not available, but Fury doesn't contact, say, Professor Hulk, Doctor Strange, or Scarlet Witch, or Hawkeye, or Ant-Man and the Wasp, War Machine... The Winter Soldier, Falcon, or Black Panther. Black Panther, of course, being the ruler of Wakanda, the most advanced nation on Earth, with an entire army and many stealth aircraft. But no, instead, Fury decides the fate of the world must rest with a 16-year-old child whose superpower is that he can stick to things. Along the same lines, we also have the part of the plot where Tony Stark has left his weapon system, a satellite-based weapon system that can kill anyone, anywhere, at any time. He's entrusted that, again, to Peter Parker, a hormonal teenager. Whatever could go wrong. But the film is really good. There was one downside to it, though, and that's that I was watching in the cinema, and my cinema's got this really awkward policy that they allow other people in the cinema when I'm using it. The issue with this is that the certificate for this film in the UK is 12A, meaning you have to be 12 years old or be accompanied by an adult. So, I'm sat down, waiting for the film to start, and in walks a father with his child, his son, who I'd assume is about four years old. So I watch the entire film with one finger in my ear, trying to block out this kid going, Daddy, Daddy, it's Spider-Man, Daddy. Daddy, Spider-Man, Daddy, who's that? Can I have a chocolate, Daddy? Daddy, I need the toilet. Now, I don't blame the kid, because kids are thick as shit, but I would have quite happily punched his fucking dad. Here's the thing. Kids get discounted tickets for the cinema, and I can understand that if it's just for a children's film, but for a big movie franchise like Marvel with fans of all ages, if you wish to... Sub subject the rest of the audience to your bloody offspring, surely you should have to pay a premium for kids' tickets. It wouldn't just be the cinema for me either. If you're on a plane, if you're going to put a screaming infant on a long-haul flight, you should have to play more than, in fact, double fucking first class if you want to put some screaming toddler on a nine-hour fucking flight across the Atlantic. Another thing that wound me up is this kid was wearing an Iron Man shirt. I'd look at him thinking... What are you doing wearing that, you lot of shit? You weren't there in the beginning. You didn't see Iron Man. You didn't see it the way we all saw it the first time. Downloaded illegally off the internet. It took me three bloody days to get that. Do you remember the old days when everyone downloaded everything? Because there was a bit of excitement because you never really knew what you'd got. It might be a copy of Iron Man with Korean subtitles, which what we all wanted. Or it might be one that's been filmed badly in a cinema with a mobile phone. Or more often than not, it'd be really bizarre pornography that you hadn't asked for. Press play and go, is this Iron Man? I'm sure that's not Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, but now, that's it um, for the MCU till next year. The next movie will be... Uh, Black Widow, which I'll see on the day it's released, because that's going to be Scarlett Johansson whirling around in black leather for two hours. Although this has set off another argument again um, with angry women's groups on the internet who have complained that female superheroes always have their hair down, and that's sexist and is objectifying women. Now, I can see the logic in that if you're going to get into a fight, you tie your hair back to give you better visibility. I'd also argue, though, the reason that the women have their hair down is that if you're the choreographer... 
it makes it a lot easier to cover up the stunt double's face during a fight scene. I mean, a lot of male superheroes have got helmets or masks and whatever else. And we're on about objectifying people. I've yet to hear a woman complain about how in almost every superhero film, the male protagonist will develop an allergy to shirts for about five minutes of every film. So me as a man, I'm going to go, all oh, right, that's, that's the ideal, is it? That's what I've got to compete with. I mean, you could argue then, if that were the case, in every superhero film, any female superhero should ever get a tits out for five minutes. Now, that's never happened. It never will happen. However, I have seen Scarlett Johansson's breasts, but that was when her phone got hacked. <laughs>